Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Elisa. You look so much better than I do this morning, of course. You've probably had more coffee or tea or whatever you're doing there. Yep. Cr crack. <laughs> Crystal meth. <laughs> Eric says that's his game. Uh oh. Eric, how you doing, sweetie? Teasing. He says hi to you and hi to everyone who's watching. He's so happy. Oh, I'm so glad, baby. All right, we're going to talk about, we're going to continue our Lost series. Let's talk about something that's troubling to a lot of people, and that's the loss of abundance. I'm not talking about just money. The, boss of the, the uh, loss of the abundance of friends, of whatever. Tell me about that. He said, you've got to know there's really no such thing as loss of abundance because you don't get to own or have ownership over the money, over the friends, over the, the <laughs> emotional support. So he's just like listing random things. There's real, really no true ownership. So if you're seeing it that way, and then all of a sudden you wake up and you're not in control over it the way that you want to, then you're going to view it as a loss. You're going to view it as a disturbance. But when really there are cycles and shifts, and you can talk to people who do numerology, mm -hmm. and they cycle through you know, seven years or ten years. And we go through phases where we collect a lot, and then we decide what we've collected, is no longer helping us. It's no longer what we want to do. And so we stop taking care of it. We stop keeping it around us. And even if you have money in the bank, you are consciously saying to yourself that you want to save it, right? You're doing steps and budgets in your life to keep that money in the bank. Let's say you wake up and you decide... You don't want all that. You don't want that kind of responsibility. You don't want that over your head. And you start liquidating. Let me give you my, the wiring instructions and you can wire it to me. <laughs> you start listing off numbers like it's a bank account. <laughs> Eight, one, two. So you, you start, you stop giving it this conscious focus and you turn into the next cycle of your life or the next phase in your life. And maybe now you're going more into uh, nature or preserve or emotional health. You know, it, when you recognize that you're losing abundance and you're not really consciously aware of it, step back and see what you're attracted to it and what your goals are now. What you're attracted to it, what you, what attracts, attracts you to you. the abundance, the money or whatever. Okay. Whatever it is and, and where you're going to because it's going to be your actions or by um, your own hands that get you this abundance and the lack of abundance. Now, if we say, uh, what if it was caused by somebody else, like you were a victim, like you were robbed or you had... Um, uh, something stolen, it wasn't your fault, that kind of a thing, mm -hmm. then he's just rattling on, sorry. <laughs> um, then, like I said before, I don't want you really to look at it with rose-tinted glasses and that everything has to be positive and purposeful. He goes, God, it gets really tiring staying like that. I just want you to look at it for what it is and what it gives you. So let's say you got robbed of everything. And all of a sudden you have to move out or your house gets foreclosed on or the economy shifts and you did your best to surf it and it didn't work. You made some bad decisions or whatever it is, right? So you end up with this new new situation that you never saw yourself ending up in and you have to manage that. And all of a sudden you start to look at what it's giving you. You'll recognize and he goes, I swear, I swear you'll recognize this, that you weren't really happy to the core with what you had. And mm. that these changes are being swept over you, whether you're accepting them or not, 
to show you a different way of living, to show you a different definition of abundance. Abundance doesn't have to be bulk. Abundance can be simplicity. Abundance can be scarceness. Um, because I'm not trying to fuck with your head and do like this Zen thing, you know, everything is Zen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really bad singing. I apologize. <laughs> he wasn't very good at it, but better than me. But you find in the abundance of, of not having much, you know, if that's your example, if that's your case, that it is allowing you to be a better person than what you were before. There, there's so much to gain from every situation that you can possibly see yourself in. So there's abundance of poverty, huh? What is poverty? Mom, you go around, you go to different countries, even in our own country, and you can ask a person living in a mansion if they're happy, and you can ask a person who's living in a box if they're happy, and you can get yes in both cases, and you can get no in both cases. It, you can't look at poverty as being less than or worse off than your situation, because a lot of these people find comfort in this kind of structure. They don't want much. They're not strivers. They're not fighters. They don't all sign up for the American dream of climbing a corporate ladder and driving a Cadillac. Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, I'll have to say in my practice, the, the patients with the most wealth seem to be the least happy. There you go. Maybe they were trying to amass that wealth to, to assuage some sort of wound, to feel some sort of emptiness. Okay. So, well, what about starvation? If you don't have enough money, you can starve to death. Being in a cardboard box out there on Main and Fifth, raining, snowing, whatever. True, but this person, he was not, you know, just to be devil's advocate, but this person might like that kind of survival technique. Mm. You know, they find nooks and crannies. They're not held responsible for anything. Mm -hmm. They can walk away and leave footprints. They, what do you mean, walk away and leave footprints? Well, they don't have to carry any shit with them. Oh, I see. Okay. Or even people living in housing projects. That is their comfort. That's their home. If they don't like it, you can see it, and you can see it in the way that they strive to be a better person. They'll make changes. They'll grow out of it. They'll step out of it. But there are millions of people who find that that is their way of living. That is what they want. Well, what about those people that say, hey, Joe Blow, you know, makes a lot more money than, than I do. Or he won the lotto and I want that. And, you know, so what if about the people who really aren't happy without abundance? They want those, it. You mean those jealous people that... Do you mean those jealous people who look at others to see what they want, but won't look at themselves and see what way can they make the changes themselves to get that money? Right. But, of course, some people just, without being jealous, just want more than they have. Yeah, he said, um, what about those people, Mom? What do you want to know? Because they're really not signing up for their own responsibility. They're putting the blame on somebody else. They're using a passive-aggressive guilt technique to get themselves into a place where really they can't they can't handle they're not ready for well I guess they're not comfortable they're not in that comfort zone of the lack of the abundance that they want so you talk about being in the comfort zone they don't want simplicity they don't want a lack of, of abundance they want more and maybe they want more so they can put their kids through college maybe it's just not a selfish thing there's a difference, oh, kind of like the selfish thing. There's a difference. There can be the person who's jealous and never takes action, and there could be the person who yearns for it and puts themselves um, in a job to where they can put themselves through college, to where they can get a better job, to where they learn how to budget, to where you know people strive and grow. That's beautiful, but 
if we're specifically talking about the person who's jealous and not making the steps to be a better person, you know, this is not, I don't have no idea what he just said. (laughs) This is not the kind of person that you want to reach out and help because they can't help themselves. And that would be a lesson. That would be like a life lesson. That would be their own thing. You know, you shouldn't get involved in it. Well, what about people who try? They have kids that would love to put through college, and they just can't seem to, you know, find the the uh, the financial wherewithal to do that. Together? He's hmm? like so excited. What do you mean? Like they can't seem to get it together, but they keep trying and they keep trying. Right. He says those people kick ass. Those are the people that you reach out and you help. They may fall on their ass a thousand times, but they absolutely get their end result of where they want to be. And if you're using the example of kids going to college, they will see their kids through college. So how do, we help, how do we help them? They're trying their best. So hats off to them, but they still can't seem to make it. Maybe they don't have the, the, the education they need to get a higher paid job, but then they can't go back to school because they'll starve to death because they won't have time to work. I mean, um, how can we help them? He said you reach out and you ask what kind of help do they need. Okay. Because you're surprised. You know, maybe it is that you provide the meal for their family. Er You know, instead of giving the... It's getting blurry again. Eric, pull your energy in and move back. Pull it in. He's doing it now. But you said you ask that person how they want help. Mm -hmm. Stay in control. Helping is not meant to belittle someone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Okay, let's talk about, what about a loss of friendship, for example? At the last one, and then we'll... We're done. Loss of friendship for what reason? Well, say you don't have any friends. You've lost a whole bunch of them. Because of what? Death? Plague? What are you talking about? Maybe they just don't like your ass. I mean, so so we have the abundance of money, and we've talked mostly about that, but this is just an example of non-monetary loss of abundance. Mom, if we're talking about this, then we're assuming that to have is better than to not have. What if they're lonely and they want their friends back, or they want different friends but can't seem to find them? Uh, then they're not looking in the right places and they're not opening up in the right way to collect that kind of friend. And probably they need to look inside themselves and see what kind of behavior mm-hmm. they're, they're doing that turns people off. Yeah, Or get a life coach that will help them identify those behaviors. I know he does seem to like the life coach thing. He does. He thinks it's better than traditional therapy. Yeah. Yeah, but you see why, you know, if exactly how we said, if if you are looking for friends and you can't find them, you're not putting yourself in the right circumstances. You know, like we could take the whole poverty, the person who is striving so hard to make a better life, mm-hmm. but yet they only interact with poverty. Like they need to step out of that environment, mingle with middle class. Mm-hmm. You know, talk to middle class, interview them, see what they're like, adopt these friends, step into that world so they can understand it and make those changes to get out of the poverty into the middle class. Yeah. You know, Eric, would you be willing to help people if they use the e-board? That's a communication device that Jamie, you can get through Jamie's site. Would you be able to help people um, with advice? Well, it's the same way that we help people like this. He said, yeah. But they can do it. On, guys, for you guys out there out there who don't know about it, the e-board is amazing. You can even ask Eric a question to yourself so that the other person who operates the e-board with you doesn't know. And you can look out, you know, close your eyes and it still works. Let me give an example. My husband uh, has a hard time being my partner using this e-board. And I said... <laughs> I asked Eric, well, what can he do to make it work better? And so um, somebody, uh, my daughter Michelle, writes down each letter he spells, and 
Robert and I, Robert is my friend, looks away, we look away while Michelle writes it down, and he spelled out wear clean underwear, so that was kind of funny. But no, he gives an, he gives an enormous amount of wonderful um, advice, so I really recommend you go to Jamie's site. Now, of course, you can look at her amazing calendar events and, and her services, but with love and light, and God, just that eboard is just, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. It is a lot of fun. He says, I guess we're signing off. We're signing off. So don't forget to go to Jamie's site, withloveandlight.com. Oh, thank you. And to know more about Eric, to read more, <laughs> if you like this, there is tons of material on his website, channelingericwithak.com, and start with the archives from the beginning forward. You'll get addicted. Warning. <laughs> You've been warned. All right, Jamie, bye. Eric, bye. I love you, guys. Eric says he loves everyone and he'll be haunting you later. Bye. Bye.